Senator Hickenlooper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Secretary Buttigieg, good to see you again. And again, thank you for your visit, which we were, I kept getting feedback from people in the small towns where you would stop and speak to, to the people, the people that work on the roads and help us deal with the landslides and, and a lot of the issues that we've had to face and are, I'm sure you've been dealing with all across the country. So thank you for your service. Uh, let me talk just for a moment about autonomous vehicles. Um, I think they're a great opportunity for innovation. Uh, benefits include safety, job creation, transformation of cities. Uh, while I was governor, we worked hard to ensure that Colorado would be welcoming to autonomous vehicle testing. Uh, and I think, I guess one question I have is how would the DOT ensure America maintain, le maintains leadership in the autonomous vehicle technology? Well, uh, as your question notes, a great deal is in the hands of the states. We need to make sure there's a healthy state-federal partnership to support that. Many states have offered themselves up as test beds for some of this uh, uh, technology and our that, that the vehicles are safe. Uh, we've been working to make use of exemptions and flexibilities under current law, but would also very much welcome the opportunity to work with Congress on an updated national legislative framework on AVs. Um, as you know, the uh, uh, federal regulations tend to pertain to the physical characteristics of the car. Uh, state law tends to be enforced around the, um, uh, the uh, conduct of the driver. And we have an area in, in terms of the car becoming the driver that's simply not contemplated by this existing division of labor. Yeah, exactly. And I appreciate that because I think you could play a pivotal role here in trying to actually facilitate and maybe even orchestrate how this process goes forward so that, as with the case we talked some time ago about elevators, where they had autonomous elevators back at the end of the 19th century, and yet they were not fully accepted by the public mm -hmm. for 50 years. Um, now, uh, switching over to rail and uh, reducing emissions from rail, obviously reducing carbon emissions from all manner of transportation uh, has been a top priority. It should remain a top priority for Department of Transportation. Uh, passenger and freight rail require, I think, targeted solutions to integrate technology to both increase efficiency and reduce emissions. Uh, so how do you look at uh, the DOT's work uh, to improve rail efficiency in, in connection with our climate goals? Well, as you, as you mentioned, pound for pound rail can be one of the most, uh, uh, um, or I should say one of the least carbon intensive ways to move goods. It's also a vital part of our goods movement system at a time when all eyes are on how we can improve the fluidity of our supply chains. Uh, recently, I testified before the Surface Transportation Board, the first time I'm told in, in uh, perhaps two decades uh, that a Secretary of Transportation has done so in order to emphasize the importance that our department places. Uh, on the responsibilities of the STB and on uh, freight, rail, and goods movement writ large. We see a lot of opportunity through enhanced data sharing, perhaps clarification to common carrier responsibilities and other measures, uh, some of which we can encourage, some of which are, are up to STB, some of which might uh, uh, be deserving of attention uh, to Congress, all of which would, app, uh, would add up. Uh, to more fluid and effective rail service in this country because uh, if there's even an ounce of efficiency to, to ring out of the system, now is the time to capture it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the aviation sector, sector has also made many commitments to get to climate uh, appropriate goals. Uh, some companies in Colorado are developing uh, aircraft relying on sustainable aviation fuel to reach net zero goals. Um, how can programs such as the uh, uh, FAA's continuous lower energy emissions and noise uh, program, the CLEAN program, uh, help support these efforts moving towards a, a cleaner energy for aviation? So within the $42 million requested in the 23 budget for the CLEAN program that you just mentioned, uh, there are 18 million that are specifically aligned for sustainable aviation fuels. We think that is the most promising near to medium term tool that we have to reduce aviation's climate impact. 
Uh, we also are partnering with the Departments of Energy and, and Agriculture in uh, the Sustainable Aviation Fuel Grand Challenge, trying to advance the, the development and the deployment of high-integrity sustainable aviation fuels. Uh, I should mention that I expect this will be uh, a, a big subject at the September meeting of the International Civil Aeronautics Organization. And we want to make sure that America is leading the way uh, toward SAF as it is being uh, discussed in the global context, too. Great. Well, thank you so much. And keep up the, gr the great work. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Senator Sullivan. 